Speaking of mid-range game and going to the next level, Kobe Bryant is one of my favorite players. Mm-hmm. Uh, I done we've done some digging and see that he's one of your favorite players. Where were you when he passed away? Yeah, no, I was just thinking about this yesterday. Um, mm-hmm. I remember it was just it was a weekend. I think it was maybe a Saturday or Friday. And we played Purdue. Yeah. The next day or the day after that, it was the next day. We played Purdue the next day, and I'm just I'm coming up the elevator after a lift after we just had practice, and I'm walking to the locker room, and Jacob Young is to the locker to the right of me, and he looks at me, he's like, "Dang, Hart, Kobe just Kobe just died," and I was just like, I was like, what? He was like, he just got into a helicopter accident. And I was like, I was like, who reported it? And he was like, TMZ, but there's a bunch of verified accounts reporting now. And I was like, I was like, man, no way this is true. I just, I, I kind of went into shock. And, you know, I got to the film room and Coach Brandon Knight was on his phone. He just got the alert and he's probably getting a bunch of texts and everybody. And he's like, yo, Kobe just died in a, in a helicopter crash. And all the guys in the room just went silent. And I like sit, I sit in the front row, like next to Paul Mulcahy. And I was just like, during, and we just went on with film. And like during film, like, I remember I probably didn't watch like a single clip. I was just sitting there like staring at the wall with a blank face. Like, I didn't know if it was true. I didn't know what to believe. Like I was hoping that once I got out of film, I checked my phone and it was a fake report, yeah. but you know, and then I got, I get out of film, I check my phone. I was like, it's like one of your worst nightmares coming true. And my mom texts me and my dad, my dad texts me and they're like, my dad was like, I'm so sorry, son. Kobe just passed away. And it was just like, it was such a heartbreaking moment for me. It was like something I'll never forget. Like I'll always forget, I'll always remember where exactly I was, what place, when it happened, and when I found out and how I felt. And that feeling just resonates with me to today. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that being, you know, with what happened last year, it left all of us speechless. Mm-hmm. I, I think one of the if there is anything that you could ever take out of a situation, like one thing that I've seen this week is just the outpouring of tributes again. And, and when he died, there was that combination of shock, um, but trying to remember him. And there was so much happening at one time, Ron, that, that I think we've all seen this week. Like there's just been so much, it's, it's been a lot more rewarding to see that the celebration of, of who he was even more as sad as it is to this day, you don't forget it. But I'm mm-hmm. curious, I mean, when you think about how much he meant to you and, and the inspiring factor that he, that he gave you as a player, as a person, what comes to mind? Sometimes I just catch myself in a situation and like during that five game skid, it was more prevalent than ever. I would like, I would often ask myself like, what would Kobe do? Like how would he talk to his team? Like, how would he make the best out of the situation? How would he bounce back? And, you know, like, I took it to heart. You know, we couldn't really – we couldn't buy a win for a little bit. But that one at Indiana, it just felt great. Like, I, I just kept asking myself, what would Kobe do? How would he lead this team? And, you know, in the second half, I don't think I got a sub once. Now I was just – I was just out there trying to, like, pour my heart out. You know, I didn't care if a shot went in, a shot went out. It was I was always going to defend. I was always going to rebound. I was always going to run hard. And I was always going to have my teammates back. And, you know, simple things like that, like – reflecting off Kobe's personality, like what he would have done, like how he treated people. It's just a big part of like who I am, you know, when struggle, when the struggle happened in January, I always bring it back to how Kobe respond. Did you meet him ever? Yeah. I met, I remember the first time I met him, it was, I was like, I forget how old I was like around the age, like seven and eight. Uh, the Knicks, the Knicks were playing the Lakers at MSG and my dad took me to go see him and, uh, in, in New York City, and I was I was I was nervous. I was so nervous. I was a little kid, and this was like this was like Kobe Bryant, and Michael Jordan, my era. You know, like one of the greatest to ever do it. And him and my dad are just sitting there talking, and I'm just like I'm just kind of like hiding behind like my dad. Like they're just standing up talking. I'm like hiding behind my dad. And he called me over. He was like he was like he was like Junior, come here. He was like don't be afraid. He's like we're family, and he like dad me up. And he was like I'll just never forget that moment. And he I remember one thing he told me. He was like. <laughs> He's like, no matter what, whenever you touch the basketball, I want you to shoot it, and then we'll teach you how to pass later. And then, I love, I love and then 10 years later, I see him <laughs> at the Nike Academy. This was right before my senior year. Yeah. And he came to the Academy one day, and he talked to us. And me and my dad were talking to him after. And he was like, do you remember what I told you, like, 10 years ago? I was, and then at the moment, I was like, I didn't know what he was talking about. And he was like, I told you. 
or we shoot the ball. We'll teach you how to pass later. And it was just like, it was a funny moment. It was just like, it was just like so Kobe, you know? Yeah, no, that's that mama mentality. So my mama mentality, I know when I was a player at Syracuse, before every game, 10 minutes before the game starts, I would go in the locker room and I would read articles of Kobe. Mm -hmm. um, he got prepared for the game, you know, what he did, what he ate, what was his mentality going into the game? And that would get me going. That was my way of showing my mama mentality. How do you show your mama mentality, whether it's in practice or in the games? Or even in the locker room? What is your mentality? I feel like my mom mentality in the locker room, I just, I'm always trying to be a leader. Like, no matter what the score is, no matter how many points I got, it's like I'm always trying to be a leader. I'm always trying to make the guys know that, you know, it's only us in this room and, and we believe in each other and we can beat whoever we want to on any given day. We just got to play together and play as, a, as one unit, you know. That's where I, like, channel my mama mentality as a leader. Like, in the huddles, on the court, like, I'm very vocal. Like, I'm always trying to make sure guys are up. You know, even if a guy's having a bad game, he didn't play as much as he wanted. He came out too early. I'm just trying to make sure he knows that, like, I trust him and I have his back. And, like, no matter what he does, like, I'm always going to have his back. And that's where I feel like I channel my mama mentality. You know, Kobe was a great leader on the court. He was a great player, shot maker. But above everything, he made the people around him better. And, you know, that's what I just try to do every day. That's really, really powerful stuff there, Ron. And that's exactly, you know, what you've done this year for your team. Um, we have some, some questions here that have come in from fans. And, and I think it's interesting because I, I definitely want to talk about both of your parents. I, I know you've talked a lot about uh, your mom. And I want to get back to her in a moment. But we, we had someone say, hey, uh, Ron Harper Sr. was one of my favorite Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, mm -hmm. How is your dad doing? And, and tell us something that maybe people don't know about, about you and your father. Uh, you know, my dad's doing great. He's, he's, always, he's always texting me about the games. He always watches every one of them. But some of the people, people might not know about my dad is that he's a really laid back basketball guy. Like people expect my dad to text me like paragraphs of what I need to do better, what I need to work on. But good game, he'll text me. Level head son, back to work tomorrow. Bad game, he'll text me. Extra shooting, get the shot up. The next one is going to go in. So he's really laid back with that type of stuff. And people like expect him to be like this, this, dad coach but like he's not that at all like he tell you, he gives me space when it comes to basketball and you know I appreciate that because like he knows the pressure and like he's felt it before and like with having a father of that high profile he understands what it brings on my life so he just tries to be a dad first and then the basketball coach second can you beat your pops now that's what I want to know can you beat yes. him yes yes, yes. easily like that like that's how Yes. No thought about yes. it. You just yes, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> about twelve yeses, D. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of yeses. Uh, what do you think his his his? What do you think his best advice he gave to you as both as a son and as a basketball player? What advice did your get dad give you on and off the basketball court? Uh, I guess we'll start on the court. You know, my dad, he, he always told me, no matter what, play the next possession. Like, so no matter if I turn the ball over, no matter if I shoot a bad shot, no matter if I miss a shot, make a mistake, always play the next possession because you can't get the last one back, and that's in the past. And as a person, he always taught me just to be good and to be loyal to the ones that are loyal to you. Like, you know, I know it's like a vague, it's a broad statement, but it, basically what he's just meaning is just uh, have the people's back who have yours, you know. You know, those people in your circle, those people in your tight circle, you know, you always got to take care of them through thick and thin, whether you're, you're mad at them, upset with them, not having a good day. Those people around you are always going to get you to the next one. 